This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Hello to all my favorite people. I'm Lucy and I make videos here on YouTube about photography, editing, and creative business. Today, we're going to be talking all about Lightroom and specifically the top five tips that you should know. These are going to be useful to you, whether you're a beginner or you've been doing this for a while. These are just my go-to things in Lightroom that I think are super helpful. So let's get into it. So the first tip is how to get straight lines in your photos. We've all seen those super crisp images where everything is perfectly straight. That's really hard to do in camera, uh, especially because all lenses sort of have a warp effect. You can see here, this was taken at 24 millimeters. So we kind of have it warping out in the middle along those lines. So the first thing that you wanna do with your images is go to the lens correction tab here and click enable profile corrections and look at how much that helps right away. There's a before and an after. Right away, it has fixed that sort of warping, that sort of fisheye look on the 24 millimeter and has helped so much. But it's still not totally perfect because I want this to look totally straight on, but clearly I have the camera here on a little bit of an angle. It's kind of looking up at the photo. So the next thing that we wanna do is go down to the transform tab. And what we're gonna do is pick guided. And what you can do here is actually take these lines and put them along what you want to be totally straight in your image. So I'm gonna say that one there and this here, this is the focal point. So I, I drag it along and then it just sort of automatically straightens everything. So that looks so much better. So just to finish off, we might just need to do some, some rotating or a few things like that. So we'll just sort of crop it to where I want it to be. And there we go. There is the before and there's the after. Tip number two is to speed up your masking and just make it so much easier. So you can use the brush tool here to do specific edits. I could just do the jeans or the sweater or my face here, but it gets really annoying as you really have to, you know, stay within the lines and get that specific area. There is such an easier way that you can do this. So make your brush really large so it covers the entire thing that you want to edit. And for me, that is the sweater right now. So just do a click there. You can press the O key to actually see what you're affecting. Now that we have it set up, we're going to scroll down to range mask. We're going to pick color. And then we're going to go to this little eyedropper here and go over and click right on the green. So you can see what just happened is that now it is only selecting the color that I just did the eyedropper tool on. So if I go ahead and click back onto that mask and I do the O key and let's say I want the sweater to be even greener, I can now bring that over to the green and I'm not affecting the rest of my image. I'm just changing that specific spot. And I didn't have to waste time going along with the brush tinily along every single little part of that sweater. So that is a great way to do um, edits like that. Also works really, really well for skin. Um, if you do the same thing here, you can go on the face just like that. Press the O key so you can see it. I'm gonna go to range mask again, color, and we'll just click right on there and perfect. So now I just have highlighted my skin. So if I wanna go in and make those really, you know, simple edits onto the face, um, I could bring up the highlights or the shadows. I could even bring the clarity down a little bit if I wanted my skin to look extra smooth, but that's just such an easier way than zooming in with the brush and trying to do it all by hand. The next tip is how to easily copy your edits to another photo or a series of photos. There's actually a couple ways that you can do this. So I'm gonna show you all of them really quickly. You can hit Command C on your keyboard, copy the settings that you want, copy, Command V, and then it's going to paste those settings right onto your next photo. What you can also do is say, yeah, I know I like this edit and I want it to be on all of these. I can click on the photo, hold Shift, highlight all the pictures I wanna edit, go over here to sync, press sync, synchronize. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna paste that edit across this entire series of photos. So that is a great way to edit a whole group. Now, the last thing that you can do, say you really love how you edited this photo and you take pictures like this a lot, you can just go over to presets and say, create preset. 
And then actually just name this, um, say, Awesome Sunset. Um, and then you can click Create and it will save it to your user presets. So now when you're editing next week and you have a similar photo, you can just throw on that preset. So three really easy ways to copy your edits. All right, so that was a great tip on leveling up your photography editing, but now let's chat about leveling up your photography business with PPA. So Professional Photographers of America offers a variety of benefits, including $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, data recovery services, and customizable contracts. Now, if you're a professional photographer, here's the top business resources that I think you'll get with PPA. Again, $15,000 worth of equipment insurance is a pretty amazing feature. You get full replacement coverage with a flat 350 deductible, or you can repair your equipment for a flat $50 deductible. Second, you get data recovery services, which is so crucial if you shoot events and weddings and you never want to lose those photos. And third, and one of the most useful business resources is their customizable contracts. So now you can compare and edit a wide range of documents, including proposals, cancellation letters, model releases, copyright transfers, and so much more. So if you want to learn more about PPA or get a membership, click the link in the description below and you'll actually get a special discount today. I think PPA is great for people who are starting out and want to start on the right foot, or if you've been running your business for a while and you just want to level it up. All right, let's get back to the edit. The fourth tip is using brush presets. Now we all know about photo presets, but brush presets are something that a lot of people don't actually know about, but they are so helpful when you are editing, especially if you edit a lot of the similar types of photos. So what you can actually do is go over to the brush here. And if you actually just click here where it says custom, you can bring up a bunch of templates from Lightroom, but you can also bring up your own. So for instance, on this picture I have here, clothing, sharpening, contrast, and highlight, that's one I've made. And I can just go along with it and just highlight certain areas of the coat here using that preset. So if you wanna make one of these for yourself, all you need to do is go to the brush, um, double click there to reset it all. And let's just say I wanna do like a, um, something to bring up the shadows and maybe uh, do a more green. Maybe this is gonna be like a, a foliage uh, preset there. So I could use that there to, you know, make the tree greener. Um, maybe I, I wanna put it along here as well. So then all I need to do is go over, click that custom again, and I'm gonna say, save current settings as a new preset, and then you can name it. So I could call this uh, greener and brighter foliage. So then next time when I'm editing a similar photo like this, I can just go ahead, click that, and find those uh, brush presets, and I don't have to make them again every single time. So my last tip is to use the spot removal brush to clean up your photos. I think a lot of people know to use spot removal maybe to get rid of blemishes and things like that, but it's a really powerful way to totally clean up your photos. I think people don't really realize how distracting little things are. We have um, you know, little flecks of dirt here on the ground and they really distract from your photo. So I really think that the best photos, you'll notice a lot of people, they have really crisp photos. They have gone along and they have really cleaned them up. Generally, things are never gonna be perfect. So go along and pick out every single thing that kind of is a distraction in your photos. Some things are gonna be interesting to keep, but other things like the shadows on these wires and things like that, that is distracting from the crisp look of this white building. So you can just go ahead like that, take them out, and um, yeah, it's just something to kind of look for in your pictures. It's something that's really, really easy to do and doesn't take a lot of time, uh, but I just think a lot of people sort of forget to do it, and it makes a big difference on your picture um, and how it looks. So there's the before. You can see a lot of distracting shadows on the building. You can see all this random stuff on the ground. And there's the after where everything is just really cleaned up. It allows you to focus in your image and you can really notice this great turquoise door and you're not distracted with all these other little elements. Just a really great crisp 
look. All right, guys, you know all the secrets. Those are my top five Lightroom photo editing tips. If you have a tip that I missed or you think I should know about, leave it in the comments down below. I always love hearing what you guys have to say. It's so much fun. And if you wanna try out PPA today, click the link down in the description and you're gonna get a special discount on your membership. All right, guys, I love you so much. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time. Peace out.